This is covering the fundamental counting principle. We want to know how many different outcomes will there be if I spin both of these spinners. We have the spinner labeled A, B, C, D. So on that first spinner, your different outcomes would be A, B, C, or D. So we've spun the first spinner and we've listed our different possibilities. Now we're going to look at the different possibilities off of the next spinner. Well, if we spin and land on A, there's five different results that could happen when spinning the second spinner. You could get a P, a Q, an R, an S, and a T. So those are the first five outcomes. You could have A, P, A, Q, A, R, A, S, and A, T. So if you land on spinner, if the first spinner lands on B, it also has five different out outcomes. So that makes 6 through 10 as these results, B, P, B, Q, and so on. If you land on C, there's five little fingers that come off showing that you could have five different outcomes on that other spinner. So that's up, we're up to 15 outcomes now. These are all different outcomes. And then finally with D, you also have five branches coming off and then labeling it the different outcomes that could be on that second spinner. So there's 20 outcomes, 20 different outcomes that could occur. Now, many of you in fifth or sixth grade did these little uh, trees, these combination trees, and you hated doing it. You'd run out of paper and things like that. Or you wouldn't set up enough space between your items. There is an easier way to do this, and that's what we're going to talk about. So let's do the same thing. We've got how many different outcomes will there be if I spin both spinners? All right, well, you take the number of possible outcomes on each spinner, each individual spinner, and then you multiply them. So on the first spinner, there were four outcomes. On spinner two, there's five outcomes. You just do four times five, 20 different outcomes. That's a lot easier than doing that whole tree, isn't it? You still need to know how to recognize those trees, though. It's important. So now we're dealing with rolling dice. If I roll two dice, how many different outcomes are possible? Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and set up a combination tree. If we roll our first die, which is singular version of dice, if you roll your first die, you can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now, if you roll a one, and then you roll that up the second die, you're going to get six different outcomes, and that's one through six. You could get a one, one, a one, two, a one, three, a one, four, a one, five, and a one, six. If you roll a two, you could get the same thing. Now, I'm not going to say all the different combinations there. Uh, if you roll a three, same deal. You can, on the second dice, these are all your different possibilities. Four, same deal. Five, same deal. Six, same deal. Six outcomes times six outcomes. Isn't it a lot easier to do it this way, just multiplying your number of outcomes for each event that happens? You got your first die, you got your second die, you multiply. 36 different outcomes. Now, on this problem, we've got this menu here. We've got this advertisement. You've got a three-course fiesta for eleven ninety-nine, and you you pick an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. So we want to figure out how many different meals are possible. Well, let's look at our appetizers. How many appetizers do we have? We've got the chili con queso, the soup of the day, and the bean and cheese tostada. That's three choices. You've got your entree, the Sancho Especial, the taco salad, and the enchiladas de poblano. Pardon my horrible Spanish. So we have three choices. And then we have our dessert, which is how many choices? We've got your cheesecake or your empanada. So it's two choices. Well, we just multiply three times three times two, and you get 18 different meals. You could have 18 different meals. Okay, so now we're going to talk about probability 
with multiple events. So if I roll two dice, what's the probability of rolling a three then a two? Well here is our combination chart from earlier listing all of the different outcomes that could occur, all 36 outcomes. The only time it shows rolling a three then a two is right here. So there's only one time that's going to happen. So that's one out of 36. You have a one in 36 chance of doing that. Now once again there is an easier way of doing this. You just find the probability. Okay, probability of rolling a three then a two. Well, probability of rolling a three on one dice is one out of six. Probability of rolling a two on the other dice is one sixth. You just multiply them together. One out of 36. So now we're looking at our spinners. What's the probability of spinning a B on one spinner and then a T on the other spinner? Well, we've got our combination tree showing all the different possible outcomes. And the only one that shows a B then a T is right here. So that's one out of how many were there originally? There was 5, 10, 15, 20. So one out of 20. Once again, there's an easier way to do this. You can uh, basically find the probability of spinning a B, then find the probability of spinning a T, and you multiply them. One out of 20. It's a lot easier, isn't it?